Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we are in your presence, that you are here in our midst. Lord, thank you for everything that you have in store for us today. All that you've been doing, all that you've accomplished already. Lord, all that you are going to do in our midst, Lord, even through the rest of the service, we pray that you'll speak to us, minister to us, Lord. Minister to us, Lord. Open our eyes. Illumine our wisdom. Brighten our thoughts. Remove the clutter. It causes us to be more efficient and effective in the way we live our lives. Let your word, word come to us, Lord, this morning. Wash us, cleanse us, purge us, correct us, chisel us and shape us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We've learned so much in the past months about joy. Say joy. joy. About grace. grace. Say grace. grace. About wisdom. Grace. Amen. And, uh, and about righteousness and so many other things that we've been, uh, that we've been dealing with in this church. You know, the Beatitudes and all the, the entire spectrum. And we're going to continue our meditation on wisdom today. And the, the more we look into the word of God concerning wisdom, the more we realize that, like I've already made it clear to you, wisdom is expressed in the words that we speak. And that it is made manifest or revealed uh, in the decisions that we, we make in life. So, uh, and I, I want to remind you one more time, this is a, a deep topic, it's a deep topic which requires a closer study, a deeper study, um, you know, set aside time to study, uh, you know, deep into it, yeah. Uh, and this is, this is going to really change the way you live your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, many Christians have found cribbing, you know, along their journey of faith, along their journey of life. Uh, and when I say cribbing, what I mean is murmuring and complaining all the time. And, and it's very sad to see Christians in that mode, always complaining, always murmuring. And, you know, the, 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 the tone of their voice is always um, gloomy. And I've realized that, by observation, I've realized that the easiest thing for a person uh, who is depressed, easiest thing for a person to do when he's depressed is to speak negative. It's the easiest thing that a person can do. Because it's a, it's a natural instinct of man to speak in agreement to depression and gloom. Negativity thrives in the human language. Have you, have you noticed that? Negativity thrives in the human language. Now even, just, okay, now, uh, pay attention to what you listen, what you hear, even normal conversations. Uh, the, the most used uh, jokes of the day are all colored in gray shades or negative shades, dark shades. You know, one of the unwritten trade secrets followed by the, the top media houses of this world and the news corporations of this world is negative news brings positive business. How do I know it? I've, I've been part of a, a media house and I work close with media companies. And one is, this is one of the un unwritten, like you know, it's, it's stated but it is not written down. It's stated, it is an open secret, so to say. Negative news brings positive business. In fact, the tragic, tragic news reports with all the graphic details, all the gory details equals more TRP. What is TRP? Television rating points or more readership if it's a newspaper or more viewership if it's an online media. So the, the, the more graphic it is, the more... Um, heart-wrenching it is, it gets more attention. I hope you already know that. In fact, uh, a huge chunk of the elderly population of the state opens, starts the day by opening to the 
which page of the newspaper? Say it. That's right. So you know it. I know it. They know it. They opened the obituary page. They start their day by searching through the who will have died this morning. The television serials playing the 437th episode on, on a channel survives or keeps their audience with teary eyes and turmoiled minds. Do you know that? You must see the tension on the face of some of them who are following these serials. 30 minutes is the duration out of which 10-15 minutes is advertisements. But in the remaining 10-15 minutes, out of the remaining 10-15 minutes, it's a lot of music. You know, the, the emotional... Melodramatic. Uh, melodramatic music, that's right. But how it can grip a person's attention. For all the youngsters who are feeling safe right now, because I'm talking only about newspapers and serials, and you don't even watch television, you don't uh, uh, read the newspaper also. You're feeling so safe. You know, uh, I want you to know that uh, a research study conducted by the Harvard Business School came to the conclusion that on social media, which is uh, the novel kind of media, not television, not radio, not newspaper, uh, on social media, negativity spreads much faster than positivity. The easiest bet to form a trending property on social media is to create a content themed on fear, insult, anger, pain, revenge, hatred, despair, calamity, Lack, accidents, tragedy. So the popular modern day adage in journalism is, if it bleeds, it will lead. If it bleeds, it leads. The more blood there is, the more tears there is, the more heartbeat there is, the more shock there is, the more aghast there is, it will become trending. Now, it is in this context, we must, we must realize the gravity of the passages in God's word, which instructs us to watch our tongue and to guard our mouth. Because, we, see, we, why is it important for us to realize this is how the world functions? Why is it important for us to realize that this is how the world functions? So that we will not end up being like the, the world. We are not called to be like the world. We are, but we are not unaware of it. We are called to be separate. To be distinct. Sanctifying our tongue to communicate the oracles of God is a high calling. Setting our tongue apart to communicate the utterances of God is a high calling. We must know that we are called to declare what? The excellencies, the high praises. That's right. The excellencies of our. That's right. The excellencies of, our, of the fountain of life. Amen. Amen. The excellencies of our God. We've been chosen for that. The lips of our, the righteous is fountain of life. The lips of the wicked is violence. That's what the scripture and Proverbs say. You know, unless you stop yielding your tongue to. To, the, to, speak the world's, to speak the world's language, you cannot even begin to speak the language of God. Right. You have to stop yielding. It's a willful submission. It's a willful 
um, resistance to speak the language of the world and a willful submission and yielding to speak the language of God. You have to press in your tongue as a slave of righteousness. And we've been, we've been hearing that for a while now. You have to press in the members of your body. And I'm telling you, you have to press in your tongue first and foremost as a slave of righteousness. A slave of righteousness is an act of faith, an act of obedience. Say obedience. It's a faith. Speaking right is an act of faith. Speaking right is an act of faith. Speaking right is an act of obedience. I want to ask you this question. How is your tongue doing this morning? Can I see your tongues? How is your tongue doing? Does it require repair this morning? Does your tongue need repair this morning? Does it need a cleansing touch this morning? Does it need the touch of the, like, the, like we read in the, in the Bible, the altar coal of heaven? Amen. Touch my lips. Yes. Touch my lips with a burning coal from the altar that is burning before God. Now all you got to do is present your tongue. Place it as a living sacrifice before God. You got to place your tongue as a sacrifice before God. I'm not, I'm not even trying to indicate it is easy. I'm not even trying to suggest it's a, it's a, it comes natural. It will not. But it's a sign of discipleship. It's a sign of being a true disciple. Being discipled by God's word. That you press in your tongue to God to speak the content of God, the theme of God. That you make your tongue the pen of a ready writer to sing, to, to, to write poetry about your king. Your tongue must write poetry about your king all the time. James chapter 3 and verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. What does it say? It is an unruly evil. Full of... Oh, no one can tame the tongue. No man can tame the tongue. Now this, is a, this verse is a reminder that we cannot do it on our own. It is not possible for the natural man to tame the tongue. You need the Holy Spirit to tame this unruly evil which is full of deadly poison. Only the Holy Spirit can help you to tame this tongue, this unruly evil, this rowdy in you, this villain in you. Full of deadly poison. It's, it's a, actually, it's a comfort when you read that scripture. But no one can tame the tongue. No one can tame the tongue. Some of you are like, oh, see, no one can tame the tongue. But I'm like, ah, no one can tame the tongue. Only God can do it for us. What it, what it takes is not strong will or determination. No, I've tried it. I've tried it. I've tried my best to, uh, you know, I was determined that I will not speak anything bad or, you know, wrong or... But I've realized that the more determined I am, the more easier I failed. Faster I failed. All it takes is submission to the Holy Spirit. So you have to stop saying, I've tried my best to control my tongue, but I just cannot. I tried my best, but I cannot. I just cannot have control over what I say. Your best does not work, dear brother, dear sister. Your best will not work when it comes to controlling your tongue. Now from, listen, from Adam all the way to you, you can put your name there. Only one person has tamed the tongue. Completely, fully, 
His name is Jesus. So I want, I have news for you. Only Jesus can tame the tongue of a human being. But for that, you have to acknowledge the need. Now some of us are like, you know, this is not for me. Today's message, brother, is all for you. Dear sister, listen to what pastor is saying. It's for you. But I want to tell you, it's for every single one of us. Jesus alone can tame our tongue. Because otherwise, our tongue is full of deadly poison, unruly evil. Now, I've been so terribly disturbed and heartbroken by the random words other Christians have spoken, only to realize that I'm no better than them. I'm sure that you we, we can all... We can all share notes about this. So hurt by, how could he say that? How did she say that? It was so terrible, how foul that is. How? Then I realized, okay. Hello. If left on my own, I'm no better than anybody else. So I resolved to ask the Holy Spirit, to help me with this. And you got to experience this for yourself. This is so incredible. He will interfere with your speech real time. I'm saying real time. If you have experienced that, you can say amen. amen. He will interfere with your speech real time. You now, when you're saying you have an idea in your mind and you want to communicate that, it's like bubbling within you. And you, you opened your mouth also and suddenly you, you will end up irritating people by not releasing what's in your mind. Sometimes you will feel like you have something within you bubbling and you want to release it and you'll go like... You go voiceless. Only air is coming out. Some other times you, you, you would have said it also and you like screeching. You can hear the screeching of the brake. <laughs> and you want to reverse the car now. And go back and say, I'm sorry. No, that's not what I meant. Now, this is, you know, you, you have to realize, you have to experience this to realize what I'm talking about. There are times when the, the Holy Spirit has prevented me from saying anything about a matter until he has trained me completely to speak about that. And there are a lot of things I want to say. I'm like full of information, full of this and that. He said, no, 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 keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Okay, why? And then he will... He'll open my eyes to understand something else. And then he'll say, now you speak. So now, you should come to a place where you don't care whether the other person is listening or not. As long as you're speaking the right thing, you can walk off from that place in perfect peace. I've said it. What God wanted me to say, I've released it. I go back and give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for enabling me to speak what is right. So no man can tame the tongue. Only the Holy Spirit can. Depend on Him. Depend on Him. Now last week I told you that it is um, wisdom to trust in the Lord and not to lean on your own. So concerning the, the, the words of your mouth, it is wisdom to depend on the, on the Lord, to trust in the Lord, than to rely on your smartness and your vocabulary. And the richness of your words and your eloquence. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4. We looked into this scripture a couple of weeks back, but I want to drive your attention to that one more time. Proverbs 15, 4. That's right. A wholesome tongue. Say wholesome tongue. A wholesome tongue is a, a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Hallelujah. Say wholesome. Say wholesome one more time. Wholesome. A wholesome tongue. You know what, means, what, it, what it means by wholesome? Wholesome. Okay, let's look at some other versions. If you have another version, you can give me. Huh? A healing tongue. Okay, that's good. A gentle tongue. Huh? A soothing tongue. That's right, a soothing tongue. A healthy tongue. 
uncorrupted tongue a soothing gentle uncorrupted curative able to cure a curative tongue that's the that's the that's the literal meaning of that word a curative tongue a medicinal tongue ah is medicine you have a pharmacy right inside your mouth it's a is a remedy to all your problems a remedial tongue a curative tongue a yielding tongue fruit bearing yielding tongue a sound tongue is a tree of life now what is a tree of life now tree of life Where, where did you see the tree of life? In the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, the two, two trees. One was the, the tree of life, the, the other one was the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, good and evil. Okay? And when man fell, what did God do? God prevented man from eating of the tree of life. Why? The tree of life has the, has the ability to make man live forever. So God did not allow the, the fallen man to eat of the tree of life. You know that, right? So he prevented, he guarded it so that man will not eat of the tree of life. And that you see in Genesis. Now, where else do you see the tree of life? In the book of Revelation, the first book and the last book contains some mention about the tree of life. What do you see in the book of Revelation concerning the tree of life? That's right. There are, there are, uh, there are different kinds of fruits Each, in each month, a different fruit it will bear. That's fantastic, right? In Jan, a fruit. In February, another fruit. In March, another fruit. Hallelujah. The leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. Ha. The leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. Right in the sandwich between the book of Genesis... And the book of Revelation, we find the tree of life again in the book of Proverbs, multiple times, multiple mentions. I believe it's a type of the tree of life. A type of the tree of life. Everything that the tree of life in can, is intended to do, this tree of life can do in your life. What is that? It can give you longevity. It can make you live forever. It can bring healing to you. It can satisfy you. Fruit bearing. Where is this? In your tongue, not in the Garden of Eden, not in the New Jerusalem. In your... Hallelujah. Look, look at the adjective used before the tongue. A wholesome, say wholesome. Say soothing, say curative. Say medicinal. Say remedial. Say sound. Say uncorrupt. Say yielding. That's your tongue. That's your tongue. It's a tree of life. A wholesome tongue can heal and cure. A sound tongue can restore and revive. Uh, it can bring forth fruit in the right time. Hallelujah. Where is the remedy to all your problems? Do this. Uh, do that. The next time you face with the problems, do this. Look in the mirror, do that. There's your remedy, I'm telling you. You have to realize that there is power in your tongue, upon your tongue, to solve the problems of your life. It can bring healing to your body, physical healing. You know, now we have some symptoms. You'll start talking about the symptoms, so how bad it is. It is becoming worse by the day. It's becoming bigger by the day. It's becoming, uh, you know, more painful by the day. And, you know, it's like the other person uh, had and he died. And it's like the other person had and uh, she was bedridden. And I'm also... You're talking about your problem. And talking so much about your problem is a tree of life. Let life proceed from your tongue. 
That's the problem. That's the problem. You would rather believe the medical store opposite your house than the tongue in your mouth. Maybe it's about the money that you spend. The, the amount of money people spend on medicines these days. Do one thing. Next time you say something nice, pay yourself some money. You'll feel good. You'll start believing what you say. Give your spouse also some money. Every time she says something nice, something, something that is of healing to you, give her some money. <laughs> Glory! Oh, we'll be so rich. We'll be blessing each other all the time. That's a fantastic idea. Thank you so much. The church must do that. The next time there is some pleasant words in your family, bless that person. Bless your husband, bless your wife, bless your son, bless your daughter. Huh? It is better than spending money in the medical store. Sorry, I didn't hear you, King. Proverbs 16, verse 24. It says, pleasant words are a honeycomb. Say honeycomb. Pleasant words are a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. <laughs> I like it. I love it. You know what it says? I read it and I, I went like this. That means you do not have to depend on any form of artificial sweetness. Pleasant words are better and healthier. It's a better and healthier alternative to sugar. You can't take it literal, can you? Can't you? Pleasant words. You see, you, you just receive this. Pleasant words is a healthier and sweeter alternative to sugar. That's what this says. Pleasant words are a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul. It's sweet to the soul. You know, all the wives can make a note of this. The morning coffee that you make can taste sweeter to your husband if you can serve it with pleasant, godly conversations. Ah, I like it. The morning coffee that you make, Animam has already taken down notes. The morning coffee that you make or the morning tea that you make for Kuchuman Chai will be sweeter Richer, without sugar, if you, can, if you can place it before him with some pleasant, godly, word-based conversation. While you're eating food, don't speak anything negative. Don't speak about this and that accident and this calamity and this, that tragedy. Don't do that. Your food is sanctified with word and thanksgiving. May your husband call you honeycomb. May your husband call you honeycomb because of the words that you speak. I bless you, with all, bless all, all the wives in this house. May your husband truly call you sweetie, sweet, that's right, honeycomb. You know why? Because of the words that you speak. Honey is representative of God's word. It's your, your precepts are sweeter than honey to my lips. Now for all those of you who are worried about weight gain and borderline blood sugar level, the Bible is presenting a sure remedy for your dilemma. Have pleasant conversations. You can avoid all sugar. That's right. David, do you, you, see I'm giving you a solution for that. You want to cut sugar? Get into conversations which are godly, word-based. And tell mama, mama, tomorrow on let's, let's have a Bible study for breakfast because I'm cutting sugar. It works. That's what the Bible says. I'm telling you, this is literal. You can try it out. This is literal. Everything that you eat will become enjoyable if you can have it like... Pastor Wynn was pointing out, with thanksgiving, with the word of God, it's sanctified. Your food will become a, a healthy, uh, nutritious consumption to your body. Do not discuss the, the news headlines when you're having breakfast. Do not discuss the world politics when you're having lunch. Discuss the word of God. 
discuss the word of god encourage your children to ask you questions from god's word if they ask anything else shh, keep quiet but have conversations see it's it's good to have conversations over the meal which are directed to god discuss what god is speaking to you weave conversations about the mighty works of god it'll be sweet to the soul and healing to your bones the diet plan starting today your new diet plan godly conversations godly conversations every food will become tasty to you man shall not live by bread alone but by every word word must be part of your diet hallelujah proverbs 12 verse 18 may your words be better than sugar may your words be sweeter than sugar not sugar coated not sugar coated better than sugar not flattery the truth there is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword but the tongue of the wise brings healing you know at one point of my life i used to take pride in the fact that i can speak like this is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of the sword when i speak i can hit the heart but the tongue of the wise brings healing now do not be the one who speaks rashly like the thrust of the sword know that your tongue is a dangerously sharp sword your tongue is a dangerously sharp sword it can cut it can it can make others bleed it can make others bleed it can open up a wound sometimes incurable in a home kids are not allowed to play with sharp objects i hope your home is like that i hope when I, if i come to your home i will not find swords and knives and and needles in the children's toy basket because it is common sense not to allow small children to play with sharp things if they ever have to use a scissors or a knife what what are we supposed to do we supervise their activity and we stand with them and we instruct them and we hold their hands is that right or wrong the use of your tongue must be like that you must do it under the supervision of the holy spirit because what you have inside your mouth is a very sharp sword dangerously sharp sword it can cut it can cause people to die it can burn it can scratch it can pierce without the supervision and the instruction and the guidelines and the real time guide, guidance of the holy spirit you are dealing with an extremely dangerous object that's why the bible the bible is very clear about it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison it can kill unruly evil there's no limit to what it can do and don't see the, if there's anybody in this church who takes pride in how sharp your words are when it comes to blocking people and hitting people hard for all the wrong reasons and you have to snap out of that this is not a godly trait at all if your words are found to be sharp may it be sharp for the kingdom of god may it be about the gospel that you cut through every thought every discernment every every attitude let your words be sharp to cut across resistance to god's word but if you're taking pride in the fact that i i have very sharpness my my words are very sharp it can it can cause people to wobble i can bully anybody i mean i may be a person with a small frame but i can but i can bully anybody with my words i am not afraid of anybody because my words are sharper than any weapon that they possess and i'm telling you sometimes people behave like this even in the church and it is so so sad it's so disturbing 
No, I've been like that. And I had confidence in my tongue. We also learned that the tongue is like medicine. A little while earlier, a few scriptures that we considered, a tongue is like medicine and kids are not allowed to handle medicines. Right? Keep children away from medicine or keep the medicine away from children. It's an instruction on the... Now, if the child has to be administered some medication, that's by the supervision and the wisdom of the parent. Likewise, the medicine that is your, your, your tongue, it must always be administered by the Holy Spirit. The words that proceed out of your mouth, it is medicine. It has to be administered the right dosage. The right dosage. The right time. The right usage. The right storage. You must have the desire to speak like Jesus. You must have the desire to speak like Jesus. Every child here, listen to me. Listen to me. All of you, children, listen to me. You must pray every day, Lord, I want to speak like Jesus. Every day, pray like this. Make this a prayer of your life. Lord, I want to speak like you. Not just from the pulpit, but even otherwise. I want to speak like you. You know, he spoke a word. And, uh, and people in a distance, in a far distance got healed. That's the power of the word that he spoke. He spoke the word here, miles away, person got healed. Hallelujah. Desire to speak like that. Doctors, you don't have to administer, you don't have to prescribe medication. Your tongue is a medicine. The, the words, and you're going to see that in your, in your career. How, how when you say things, it will bring healing to people. And they'll testify, you're not like any other doctors. We're not coming to you for medicine. We're coming to hear the words of your mouth. And make it a desire. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. Don't, don't uh, belittle yourself for the laws of medical science. But ex you elevate yourself. Be found in a place where you move in the supernatural. Amen. Governed by God's word. Do not wield the tongue any way you feel like. Now bring it in subjection to the will of the Holy Spirit. May your tongue be continually trained by the Holy Spirit. When you, before you go enter a house, I don't know how many of you do this. We do this. It's a practice that we do when we go visiting people. Now on the, on the road, you know, Nisha will remind me, let's pray. What are we praying? We are praying that our conversations will be filled with the grace of God. It will impart grace to the hearer. It will it'll bring solutions to problems. It will bring healing. It will bring wisdom. And we will be able to speak the truth in love. Whether we are received or not. And we pray that when we go visiting people. And praying for people. And I, say, I encourage you to make that a practice. When you go out meeting people, pray. Before every meeting, you pray. It can be a business meeting. It can be, okay, definitely when you are going to take classes, you have to pray. Lord, help me to speak right. To my students. You're going for a meeting. You're, you're meeting your friends after a while. And I pray that you'll speak the excellencies of God, the high praises of your God. When you speak, people are captivated. What kind of authority? What kind of authority? What kind of confidence? The boldness, the insight, the wisdom, the ability to solve enigmas and problems. Now, every conversation that we have must be purposeful and subject to the will of God. Even if you say a joke, it must be purposeful. It must bring an effect in the life of that person. And that's a good desire to have. Now, we all want to crack a joke. It's not easy to crack a joke, I'm telling you. But you must have the desire that even your joking will cause an effect which will awaken a person, which will quicken a person. Every conversation should be purposeful. And we must pray that whatever we speak will be a blessing to people. 
before you go to school you must pray okay lian and abigail and prissy and all of you okay you go to school or you meeting your friends you must pray lord today i want to bless people i want to bless people with what i say you must do that come back and tell your parents today i had this conversation and i said this was it right you can ask your parents was it right what should i say they are asking me this question and ask the holy spirit to, to help you to speak bring them to jesus they should ask you why are you like this you are different you should say i love jesus simple anybody can preach the gospel don't think that you have to grow up and um, and stand behind the pulpit to preach the gospel you can preach the gospel where you are right where you are and my greatest regret is the fact that i couldn't preach the gospel when i was in school because i didn't know the lord now i'm trying to go to schools and preach the gospel now you can start when you're in schools in your school preach the gospel tell them about jesus pray before before you go out in the morning pray lord today i want to i want to bring the word of god to somebody that just lead me to the right person help me to have the right conversation the effect it has in making friends you must do it uh you know when we <clears throat> we went to schools and we get to interact with um, the teachers the student counselors and all you know some of them come and confide with us some of the problems that they face uh with the students of today and it's you can ask the teachers here it's beyond what you can imagine so when you if you're sending your okay all the parents listen if you're sending your child to school send them as a missionary train them up as a missionary tell them you're going there going to school to tell them about jesus otherwise don't send them I just don't send them. Well, I mean, why, why else do you want to waste the, the, the life of a child? Going to a place where they are bombarding them with all kinds of nonsense. It must be with the sole purpose to tell others about Jesus. To sow the seeds of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Either you are all listening and agreeing or you are all like, okay, what is this now? Are you agreeing with me? Yes teachers you must resign your jobs if you are not planning to preach the gospel take it from your pastor you must resign your jobs if you are not planning to tell them about tell your students about Jesus don't be afraid of anybody you are sent there with the purpose to tell them about Jesus it's your mission field it's your mission field just like how missionaries say we've been to orissa and west bengal and chatisgarh and you know africa and all we been to marbasilia school right. what are you doing there we are missionary teachers that's what you are missionary doctors yeah. and missionary businessmen or whatever you are if the adjective missionary or the or the description christian or missionary does not precede the title that you carry your title is worthless it's a worthless it's just a bird it'll be a burden some title for you it'll it'll become a burden for you whatever it is it can be the most fancy title in the world doctor advocate bureaucrat teacher scientist if does it does not if that title is not preceded with the word missionary or christian that title will be a burden to you if you if you cannot if you cannot come to terms with the fact that you are a christian musician music will become a burden to you because you are pursuing after emptiness and what what will happen for those who pursue after emptiness they will become empty so every pursuit in life must be smeared with the purpose of heaven every pursuit in life must be smeared with must be colored must be painted with the purpose of heaven as it's a pity it's a pity otherwise
from today onwards look at your tongue differently you know you stand before the mirror you look at, i know that you you all look at the mirror i know that by the looks of all of you i am sure that you all look at the mirror you spend considerable time in front of the mirror i know that you cannot hide that fact from me i know it next time you do that open your mouth and bring out your tongue just by way of reminder that's a potential a potent thing in your in your mouth is the most important element of your body yes. it leads it 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 writes the chart it charts the direction of your life it writes the course of your life it decides the direction that you're taking Woo! it can destroy hours of makeup all the cosmetics you can remember all those brands right now all will go in waste your tongue can put you to shame your tongue can put you to shame if you're not grooming your tongue if you're not grooming your tongue well if you're not training up your tongue properly doesn't matter how you look doesn't matter what matter what you're wearing and what you smell like none of those things matter if your tongue is not in the right place speaking the right things ha 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 pity it's a pity speak right bring life speak healing and a stop going to places which celebrate tragedies stop meeting people who only talk negative until and unless they decide to listen to you see see listen 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 okay all of you listen we have a feeling that as ministers of god we are called to listen as yes, we are called to listen but there's a limit to your listening you are called to speak so don't try to be a good listener at the expense of becoming a good speaker that's right are getting this so don't take pride i'm a very good listener i can listen to their uh, all their tragedies hours and hours i can listen to them what's the benefit they just poured out all their garbage on you vomited on you you going back with their vomit on you doesn't profit them doesn't profit you as a minister of god you're not called to be a listener yes you have to listen but you have to draw a line okay i've listened enough okay i'll tell you something from my experience all the stories are similar you can ask people who are who do counseling you who who help people you can ask them every story is similar the 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 foundation of every problem is what sin the foundation of every problem is sin so you have the solution even before it's like you know somebody wants to introduce a product okay and you, they'll ask you do you have a, for example they'll come to your home and say uh, is your house leaking uh, do you have dampness on the wall and you'll say yes yes i have the product for that so you don't wait for the person to say yeah, since 2018 floods my wall became damp and then it started to leak no you don't you don't the the, the salesman doesn't want to know all that the statement the salesman will come straight to the point i want to sell a product which you are in need of that's how you must approach god's word the presenting of god's word you don't have to spend hours listening to problems you don't have to you don't have to it's a lie it'll only make you depressed you have to listen give ear to the point that it's a comfort but then it's time to speak the tree of life the fruits has to come forth the leaves have to come forth what they need is healing not listening not a place to dump the garbage are you with me hallelujah did you receive something today did you receive something today what did you receive something did you receive something today what did you receive huh 
speak life have life okay what else what else huh tree of life it's in your mouth what else the holy spirit must be a supervisor of the use of your tongue what else huh who said that ah uh, wisdom yes what about wisdom you must speak it's wisdom to speak right <laughs> tongue is the pharmacy that's right it's it's got remedies to your problems we cannot uh, absolutely that's probably the most important thing today we cannot do it on our own we cannot we cannot we cannot we cannot do it on our own the help of the holy spirit hallelujah let's all stand and let's pray together father thank you for ministering to us thank you for the word that was released over us lord thank you that you are you're doing a work in our lives you're doing a work in us you're training us lord to speak like the learned you're equipping us to be wise in the way we speak you're changing a language you're changing a language you're placing a premium language upon our tongue yes. you're causing us to be people who will speak life bring life and and health and healing to homes to families yes. to individuals to lands hallelujah hallelujah a soothing tongue a wholesome tongue you have granted to us lord a soothing tongue a curative tongue it's your gift to us it's your gift to us lord help us lord to be good stewards of that gift that we may use it wisely we may use it wisely lord help us to have the desire to speak like jesus to speak like jesus and lord that we constantly press in our tongue as a slave unto righteousness we will not depend on our smartness or our on our determination to to speak right but we'll be dependent on you we'll be dependent on you always always help us we pray come at every single person lord especially come at the little children lord lord we want to hear testimonies of what you are accomplishing through them lord we release them as missionaries into these schools we release them as ministers of god in the schools lord doesn't matter how young they are doesn't matter how small they are lord we just ask of you that you will use them lord you can use them we want to, we want them to be used in these schools in these campuses lord amongst their friends the impact it can have not just on an individual friend but it, it can have on families lord we understand it we ask of you father that your word will run swiftly yes will run swiftly or send them out as messengers lord we ask of you that you'll equip your children you'll equip them father yes. to speak right now even because the, your word says that even a child is known by his deeds even a child is known by his deeds lord we ask of you that our children will be known for the good deeds for the good words for pleasant words thank you lord may our speech be sweeter than anything that is artificial may it be real real sweet like honeycomb bless the tongue place the coal of your altar upon our tongue let that coal be placed upon our tongue cleanse us purge us holy spirit touch us revive our speech may this be a, a a lasting desire in us lord in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen.